something in the mail today. Let's see what it is. What do you think it is? A cheese. Oh, you ruined the surprise. Okay. All right. So we've got kind of a random selection of seeds, but it's just all stuff that we wanted to try. We're open to trying anything. Um, the first thing we got. What are these? My cucumbers. Your cucumbers. Daddy wanted some cucumbers too. We got. Um, we have seeds left over from last year, but my husband wanted some slicer cucumbers for salad. He did pickle some cucumbers last year. Um, he wanted some slicers this year, so we got the space. What is it? Space Master 80 cucumber, which it says it is a bush variety, and the fruit will reach seven to eight inches in length. And then the second one is the Market More 76. I think those are both pretty common varieties, so we'll just see how those do this year. Our and we got some watermelon. The watermelon. Three different kinds of watermelon. Which we might have ended up getting some more of these seeds <laughs> from the mm -hmm. store. Got some. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Put that in. Melon. Yep, melon. So we got Charleston Gray and watermelon. Watermelon. I had some old seed from this last year and it ended up. I think what happened was I wasn't getting enough water to it and they ended up kind of shriveling up. We didn't even get to eat one of these watermelons. And also the seed was old. So I went ahead and got another one of those. Like you missed this watermelon. There was four watermelons in here. There might be more. Oh, did you? There's a black diamond melon. Congo, watermelon, and Jubilee watermelon. Again, now we live on 18 acres, but most of it's hillside. Our garden, which I hope to get a good video of this year, is on the top of the hill behind our house. We actually have to take a four-wheeler or a tractor to get up to the top, or if you want to take a good walk. So, um... It did really good last year. I was really happy with it. My husband wanted, was a little disappointed. He wanted to get more out of it, but it was only our second year. So. Sorry. I'm recording this on my phone and I got a call from my son's school. All right, here's another melon, canary yellow. And again, we haven't grown this. I'm pretty excited to grow this. It's it's sweet, creamy, and super juicy. So, we will see. Look, almost, they just look like a, a yellow camelot to me. Oh my God. I'm not, I'm, I'll try to say this, Prescott Bon Blanc. Some snooty. So, this is another melon. It almost, it looks like a squash to me. But, it says it's a melon. And, it doesn't say much about the taste. I just thought it looked cool. It says it looks more squash-like, but it's filled with some of the sweetest cantaloupe fruit you'll ever taste. We will see. Alright, we'll just keep going. We like to try different ones, anyways. This is a sweet dumpling winter squash. That looks pretty cool. I don't know if any of you do this, but if I see something that looks cool, I want to. I want to grow it. I mean, it's anything you grow has to taste good, anyways, right? But it says. It has smooth, the flesh is smooth and orange, 
not too stringy and it produces a decent amount of squash that have a wonderful shelf life so this is a winter squash I don't know if you all saw that yeah, doesn't say too much about the flavor but again so we'll have to when we grow these I'll definitely have to do a video on that let you all know how they taste Jumbo Pink Banana Squash. Another winter squash. It kind of reminds me of a butternut squash. We'll have to see. I mean, the harvesting and growth is all kind of like a butternut squash. All around use. You can use it in pies. You can use it in... Baking, canning, and homemade baby food. Which my one-year-old now he eats anything, so that'll be good. We got habanero lemon peppers, which are supposed to be a hot pepper. I intend to make some rainbow cowboy candy. I'm not a big fan of hot peppers, but I I was given a ton of peppers last year and I didn't know what what kind of peppers they were they were all kinds of different peppers just thrown in a box so I decided just to make cowboy candy that way if they're hot good if they're not really hot it's still gonna be good anyways because of the brine that you put in the cowboy candy so I totally am looking forward to putting this hot pepper into some cowboy candy jalapeno peppers again we I bought a couple plants last year and they didn't do too bad but I bought them later in the season so again these two look forward to some rainbow cowboy candy because I also have some red peppers and stuff left over from seeds left over Mustard. Okay, some mustard seeds, tatsui, tatsui, however you say it. You can use this in salads. Try it. So, this is Mizuna mustard. Too, anything too exciting about that broccoli there was one of the broccolis that we wanted that they were out of stock but we ended up just getting this one again we didn't have luck with our broccoli last year something that I'm really excited about my kids well the older, older one that you just saw Payson uh, loves baby corn and then uh, the baby, of course, loves anything you feed him. So, we are looking forward to growing this. I don't even know if it's going to work where we live. We live in southern Ohio. Um, but I'm really, really hoping this is, is going to be a good producer. Because I see us eating a lot of this. Okay. Tomatoes. I gotta confess, I didn't like tomatoes until I started gardening. My parents love tomatoes, and I'm pretty sure they questioned whether I was their kid or not, because I didn't. I didn't even, I'm not a big fan of ketchup. I don't even like ketchup, or didn't. I mean, I'm not a big fan of it now, I'd just rather taste my food, but yeah, so I didn't like tomatoes until you know, a year or so ago, two years, which is how long we've been gardening, too, <laughs> so we're, we're not professionals, we're learning, so you guys are learning along with us, but last year, we, we did pretty good with our tomatoes, better than the year before, we, it was horrible the year before, I don't think we even got enough to make a tomato sandwich, really, they, our 
soil that we put our first garden in was just clay. That's all it was. It, like I had to take clumps of clay and move it to be able to plant <laughs> plant our plants, and then kind of like push that clay back over. It was bad, and it was wet that year. It yeah, it was a disaster. So last year we were just, or again I was pleased with it. My husband was kind of disappointed. He want he was hoping that we would get more. Luckily. I was, again, along with the peppers I was given, I was given, like, over 100 pounds of tomatoes. So I ended up canning those and making sauce and uh, diced tomatoes and things like that. So um, we definitely want to produce enough tomatoes this year in order for me to um, can our own this year. Because I don't know if I'm going to you know, come upon that luck again of somebody giving me 100 pounds of tomatoes and 100 pounds of peppers or not. So, we we really are hoping and we're going to work hard on getting our tomatoes to produce this year. And they produced, they just, it was, again, they were late. I don't know why they were late other than that maybe we didn't get them in the ground. I started them and they were looking good. But then I think when we transplanted them into our garden, it was a little late. And then once they got over being transplanted, it was too late for them to produce a whole lot. Is the only thing, if that makes sense. But anyways, we have like, I forget how many different varieties. I'd have to look at my thing that I wrote down. These are totally random. Just things that I'm like, ooh, that looks good. And... We'll try it. So, except for there's a couple that I've been wanting to try, and there's a couple that I know I like. But the first one on the pile is a giant Belgium tomato. It's an indeterminate, meaning it'll just keep growing. There's not like a set size or set amount of fruit that it'll give. It'll just keep growing until you, you know, you keep pruning it and taking good care of it. It'll keep growing until like the end of your growing season. Okay, of course. This is actually, it says this is Ohio heirloom. So it's a, it's a Buckeye. Um, what can grow from one to five pounds? We will see. Perfect for juicing, adding to sauces, or fresh eating. Tell me that don't look good enough to eat. Slice that up. Put on some toast. A little bit of mayo. Looks good to me. White cherry. Again, it's an indeterminate. We did not have... Well, neither of those. We did not have these last year. We only had... Um, I think it's sweet... 100 cherry tomatoes last year which did really well uh, but this just looks fun white cherry even then i'm not a big fan of cherry tomatoes either my my mom loves cherry tomatoes so we'll be sharing those abe lincoln tomato another indeterminate it is a slicer tomato which means you can slice it and put it on a sandwich. Let's see. Amazing in tomato sauce, soup, paste, or homemade ketchup. Even though I don't care too much for ketchup, my dad can go through ketchup like nothing. And me and my son, we're talking, he wants to make his pap some ketchup, so we're going to try that this year. Hopefully, if we have enough tomatoes. German Johnson tomato. It's a big, big tomato right there. Uh, indeterminate. It has notes of citrus and melon. It's a dark pink tomato. So that sounds good. I'm not a big fan of the really acidic tomatoes, so looking forward to that one. Brandywine Pink. 
I got some of these uh, as a plant. I can't remember whether they produced or not. It's another indeterminate slicer. Another thing is that I've got to work on this season is figuring out how to keep my tomatoes separate so I know what kind they are. To me, so they look so alike, and I feel like a lot of my tomatoes that grew didn't look like what they were supposed to look like for some reason. So here's a determinate Rutgers tomato, and this is for uh, salads. This is burgers and sauces. And highly productive with a flavorful acidic fruit. So that's one I've heard that is good in like sauce, like I said. Which most of the stuff like so we eat, we like eating tomato sandwiches, but how many tomato sandwiches can you eat? We don't eat a lot of salads, so we're we what we do eat a lot of is sauces, pasta sauce, um, taco sauce, chili sauce, <laughs> all those we eat a lot of. So that's what we're going to make. Hillbilly tomato. Can you really live in Southern Ohio and not want a hillbilly tomato? Okay, indeterminate. The West Virginia heirloom. Just kidding. We love West Virginia. Um, West Virginia heirloom. Stunning by color it is. Look, if I get that, you know how happy I'm going to be. I'm going to take pictures. I'll be taking Instagram pictures. Oh, I just realized that my nails were dirty. Anyway. <laughs> One to three pound tomatoes. Tell you what, I need to get a, a kitchen scale so I can measure, weigh some of these. Easily one of the largest varieties in the garden. Also spares no expense when it comes to production. Its high yields produce rich, sweet flavored fruits. Sounds like a good one. Can't go wrong with a hillbilly. Brandy wine yellow. All right, another indeterminate. We got the brandy wine pink and the brandy wine yellow. Some of our favorite uh, tomatoes to eat, just straight from the garden last year, were the colored ones, the yellows, the pinks. Um, so that's why I got that one. I forget which one we had. We got Jubilee, Jubilee, I think it was, and Chef's Choice Orange from Haas Garden. Tools. Was it Haas Garden Tools? Haas Tools last year, and those were two of our favorites. Black from Tula. Again, another indeterminate, and I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about getting this instead of the Cherokee Purple, which again we had the Cherokee Purple, and it just it just wasn't too you know, impressive to me. It was a good tomato, but I didn't see what all the hype was. Other than it was cool looking. Yeah, which might be this too. <laughs> you never know. This one, great white tomato. Isn't that cool? It's an indeterminate. It's a light yellow tomato inside and out, they say. It said, ooh, this unique variety is for the tomato lover and is perfect for sharing with someone who thinks they hate tomatoes. Non-acidic, creamy flavor. That one might be a, a go-to for me. Again, I, I just thought it looked cool. Don't tell my husband. What is that? Was Waps? Waps and con peach. We'll just call it peach tomato. It's an indeterminate. Again, look cool. 
just look different. We like different. Or I like different. I guess my husband does too. He he married me. So two excuse me. This two bite variety is bursting with sweetness and slight acidity. This one. Chernobyl tomato. I think that one looks cool too. Another indeterminate. Beautiful pale yellow Virginia heirloom. Perfect for canning and preserving. That's going to add some pretty color to your canning. Or my canning. Your canning if you decide to grow it. Tangy sweetness. Perfect addition to sauces, 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 Appalachian, uh, and paste. Chernobyl. Looks pretty cool. Now this. And my husband takes credit for this. This is my favorite tomato. And it's so basic. It's like kind of like the pumpkin spice of tomatoes. Um, so <laughs> I love this tomato. And it's so, yeah. Ox heart. Pink ox heart. And I don't care what you say. They are so pretty. I got some beautiful tomatoes last year from my pink ox hearts. They're just, they're my favorite. I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm kind of curious about this. What was it? The great white. Is it the great white? That had the cream. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to see if the great white can take down the pink ox heart this year. We'll see. So, that is all of the MI Gardener seeds. My little man was wanting to do the seeds that we got from Walmart because he helped me pick them out. So, I'll be right back. We'll see if he wants to help me. He's back. All right, so there's your watermelons. What do we got? Jubilee. Jubilee watermelon. I think we got some of those from MI Gardener too. Remember, here's your here's your camera. Oh, what did we get? We got two Jubilee. <laughs> we got two Jubilee. <laughs> well, we'll just have to see whether Fairy Morse or Burpee seeds do better. Sugar babies. Sugar. Du, 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 du. Crimson sweet. Crimson sweet and sugar bear. We grew, like, we grew the crimson sweet last year, but again, here's one that he picked out. I think it looks cool. Broccoli Romanesco. We'll have to sew that early because you think might about, but. I'm kind of looking forward to it because I've heard that um, roasted artichoke is really good. Got some pop choy. And that's something that we've seen on some of the YouTube channels that is good in stir fries. Um, I guess, I think you can, I don't know what else you can do with it. You know what I do? I put it get Pinterest and I put in pop choy recipes <laughs> so, and then then I make the recipe take a picture of it and I post it on Instagram tagging the person that I got the recipe from so if it's good it's good but yeah so th this is something that you can use in stir fries and if it's not good then I'll just feed it to my chickens and ducks right Uh, kohlrabi we are looking forward to um, chop, I forget how they did it but they like chopped this up and made it like a coleslaw one of the I think was it, it might have been Cog Hill or something that did that they used the kohlrabi 
and used it like coleslaw, which I am excited about. I want to try that. But this is purple Vienna kohlrabi. Got some more mustard seed. This is Florida broadleaf. It says excellent flavor. It makes a popular item for salads and for cooked greens. See, my husband likes greens, so yeah. There you go. Kale. I like to use kale in salad, or yeah, if we ever eat salads, salads, soup, and juicing. Whenever we juice, obviously, I don't like live by juicing either. But we have tried juicing. My husband liked juicing, so. I don't know. I've I've frozen kale that I've gotten from the store just so I have it when I want to make some of my soups. So I'm guessing that I could be able to freeze this when it grows because I'm, I'm pretty sure it produces a lot. They get pretty pretty good size, two to three feet tall. Yeah. So get plenty of kale, freeze it for soups. I planted some of these last year, and I'm not sure you know, if it ever produced anything, but we will see. It's got, <clears throat> it says it's good for drying, creating salsa, chili sauces, hot pepper vinegar, and pickling. So This is another one that, if it produces, I could use for the rainbow cowboy candy. It includes, uh, some of these I don't even... Cayenne Thick, Cayenne Purple, Cayenne Bell Yellow, Firecracker, Hungarian Hot Wax, which we've had, we actually have some seeds for Hungarian Wax, Jalapeno Mild, College 64, I don't know what that's about, Red Cherry Large Hot, it's getting kind of scary, Serrano Tam, Small red chili and pretty purple. Pungency ranges from 2,000 to 350,000 Scoville units. Yeah, so we will see. Alright, so go from the hot pepper mix to the bell pepper mix. Now these. They won't last around my house because you can eat them with cream cheese. You can just eat them raw. You can put them in all kinds of dishes. I think Payson wanted these because they were all kinds of different colors. So, so yeah, shades of red, yellow, orange, white, purple, and chocolate. Ooh, did you see that white one? That'd be pretty cool. There's purple. I don't know where the chocolate's at. But. Southern Charm. Hey. Hi, Southern Charm. This is almost Southern Charm. <laughs> Mom joke. Um, sweet basil. This is one. Actually, I think I already had this. I just found it out in the garage. But there's you some sweet basil. I love basil. Seriously, I could just grow it and pick it and just rub it and be happy. Because I love basil. So, you can never have too many basil seeds. So, yeah. Pretty excited. If you would like to see some of the pictures of our garden for last year, you can go to our Instagram account, Almost Southern Charm, and check out some of the posts I made. Um, again, it was a good year, another learning year. We are always learning. We definitely aren't professionals, but we enjoy it. This is just in my gardener seeds. I'm not going to be able to start all these seeds. I don't have a greenhouse other than the little greenhouses that have like four little shelves and like a heavy duty tarp that goes all over them. 
So I'm not going to be able to start all those seeds, but I definitely do want to start us enough to have a good start when season begins. So we've got our seeds. We should be ready. I'm not going to order any more seeds. I promise. And we've got our chicks in the incubator. We've got 13 more days on them. I'm going to post an update about that. And I'll post some more videos later. And hopefully see y'all then. Hope you can hear me every four wheeler. I rode all the way up trying to show you where our garden is at. And I get almost to the top and realize I'm not recording. So I'll try to record it going back down, but it doesn't seem as far when you go back down. There's the corner. Let's see, where's my finger? There. There's the corner, far corner. Of the garden there's <laughs> what's left of my okra forest there's the trail I came from so yeah so this was a nice little spot for our garden I'll try to get a video of me going back down to the house Maybe one day when we're rich, we'll be, build a big cabin down there. He's already wanting to build a, a little cabin on this hillside somewhere. We grew, like, we grew the crimson sweet last year, but again, they, they kind of didn't. Hi. Yeah, I've already told them about that. We're excited about that, aren't we? Yeah. Crimson sweet, they kind of shriveled up. You don't know, 